So, Helldivers 2. This is a game, I know my main crew would have loved this game if we had all been able to play it. But my work friends stepped up, they invited me to play this game. And it's funny because I was so far behind them in the progression. Like, they would be able to spawn in weapons and shit and just give them to me. You know what I mean? Just like outfit me with rocket launchers or fucking shield generator or, or whatever. There was a tutorial, but it didn't really give me a sense of what to expect when the game was actually happening. And we would load in. I don't know if this was indicative of how you're supposed to play the game or how people tend to play the game or whatever, because I only play with this one group of people. But in my experience, they would sort of scatter to the winds and they would all sort of like solo different objectives on the map because you can do all sorts of bonus shit. You have one or two main objectives, but you can get all sorts of XP and items to upgrade shit or like currency to unlock shit. You have like a 45 minute time limit and maybe it would take 20 minutes to devote to the main mission. And so people would just scatter and try to do as much fucking side shit as you could possibly do. And then eventually you'd start having to converge on the main objective. But I, for a while I was stumbling around, like not knowing what to do, getting lost, and like not knowing how to read my map, you know, like how to orient myself and like set waypoints and stuff like that. So eventually I figured that out. But at first it was just kind of like disorienting and confusing because I was kind of late to the game. So there was two very distinct enemy types. And the one was like the bugs, like starship troopers. And they would come out of the ground and you could throw grenades in their holes and close up the holes so they couldn't keep spawning, which is kind of like the Gears of War emergence day shit. And you can pick the difficulty level before you load in and that changes how, how much rewards you're gonna get and stuff like that. And on the higher levels, you really did feel like you're getting better. Like, like our team was like, oh, I think we can, I think we can attempt level eight next time. You know what I mean? And you could really have this sense of it. Shit was getting harder, and shit would get intense. And there would be these big fucking beasts, fucking armored, and they would, you know, they'd kill you so fast if they got you in a bad position and shit. And you had to try to collaborate to take some of these things down. And there would just be waves of the minor enemies, just like as far as the fucking screen, just waves coming at you you know what i'm saying and you would actually run out of ammo and stuff in this game that's something that's not very common you'd have to call in like replenishment for your supplies and shit and there would be a timer shared from the whole group which is like oh shit i have to wait two and a half minutes but one thing the game does is funny is if you reload with half a clip you spend those that magazine you know what i mean video games has this broken logic i've been playing games my whole life you could fire one round and just reload so you have a fresh clip. And the ammo isn't wasted. You know what I mean? This game, the ammo is wasted. It took me a while to realize that. You know, I always had to resupply, like, constantly. And it, and then I finally realized, like, oh, shit. So at, that adds a strategic layer. Like, is it worth reloading and wasting half of this clip, but I'll be, like, safer in this next fight? Or will I have to find time to reload halfway through the fight you know it, it's kind of interesting i kind of like that and i do kind of wish maybe more games treated it that way but it's just very rare in, in all my life playing games i've kind of like barely ever seen that if ever i don't think i've ever seen that before you know what i mean and so the other map is like these terminators these fucking robots in there terrifying like these fucking red eye robots and they have guns and shit so they're shooting you from long range and stuff like that and that mode we were like scared of that mode at first we were like yo stick with the bugs like this shit is crazy it's almost seemed like a different game like the whole aesthetic is different the whole strategy and what they're throwing at you is so different but eventually we figured it out you bring a different kit with you i, I like to use the snipers against them and just keep a distance and there was one point coming off of our war zone where we used to run around with the shields they actually had a shield so that, you know that helped me keep safe you know what i mean but there, there's really cool items in this game there's like a watchdog which is like you put on this backpack and then this drone will follow you around and stay within like two or three feet of you or whatever and it'll just shoot at any hostile you know what i mean and there was airstrikes and fucking, you could drop napalm and shit like that. Just like light up the whole fucking field. And just like, it was interesting. It was definitely very interesting. And then there's a time in the match where you reach a certain critical point where you no longer have air support. So you can't call in any fucking reinforcements. You can't call in airstrikes and shit like that. And it just gets tense. There's 
specific sequence of buttons you have to type in to accomplish something. Like, like for instance, if I need to call in an airstrike or something, and it'll show me in the top left. It's not like I have to remember it, but I'll have to manually be like up, down, left, right, circle, square, circle, triangle, or whatever, you know, something like that. And in the middle of a fight, you'll be trying to pull this off. Shit, it's crazy. And like, they're, they're called stratagems. So there's a stratagem for reviving a teammate, but you had a limited amount shared amongst the team you had a limited amount of revives you might have like i don't know 15 revives for a 45 minute match and that's like you know every time someone dies that number ticks down and then towards the end like you could just be stuck spectating hoping that your team pulls it together and which is crazy because to be without a member or god forbid more than one member at the end is nuts because there, there's a total fucking wave of enemies at the end it, it's just kind of ridiculous and there's certain things like teammate actions like if you have a rocket launcher someone could just follow behind you and just load it for you so that's not this debilitating process where you have to like put it on the ground and like fucking you know take 30 seconds reloading it so they could just walk behind you and just be like instantaneous reload so like it's got some very cool features like that and it has a sense of humor you know what i mean like if you have a shield backpack on that's generating this force field or whatever around you and someone comes in and does it hug emote with you it brings their character inside the shield with you so if you time it right with this huge explosion going on all around you you both be safe it's pretty funny man it's just it's got a sense of humor for sure and in the cutscenes and stuff and it's like you're there to save super democracy and shit like that like it, it's pretty ridiculous so the developers would allow the community to shape the way things were going like like it could give us two priority targets and the community might only have realistically time to to save one of those targets you know what i mean the developers are like if you guys can liberate this planet by such and such date We'll, we'll release this next patch early and the next patch had like mechs in it and shit like that because the, the fan base was calling oh we need mechs we need mechs and they actually did it you know what i mean it's actually a very cool development mentality it was actually pretty awesome you know what i'm saying it, it gave it gave the community something to work towards and we really felt like we were fighting for super democracy for real and the mechs were pretty awesome man the mechs were pretty cool it wasn't a full price game. It was a $40 game. I probably got like five or six sessions in there. And I, I, I was fond of it. I would go back, you know what I mean? But it's we just sort of fell off. But, but we had some good times. We definitely had some good times on that game. And I think my main crew would have really liked it as well. So there is like this sim genre of games out there. There is House Flipper. There is Power Wash simulator there's all sorts of these games in fact my friend from work the other day he sent me this it was called like hold on let me see if i can find it so he was playing this game called supermarket simulator and he sent me a screenshot he wasn't even that wasn't even the subject of the screenshot but i noticed it at the bottom he's been talking about how work's been draining him lately and it's fucking soulless and it's fucking draining and he hates it and I was like, motherfucker, you locked 36 hours on Supermarket Simulator, dude. I was like, you're out there doing five shifts of fake fucking supermarket complaining about real work. Yeah, that's funny. He died laughing, you know? That's funny. But these games are satisfying. You cannot deny that these games are satisfying. So the narrative in this game, your dad leaves you this laundromat business to run, right? And... So you literally have to load the laundry machine in people's clothes. Then when the bell goes off, you can't take too much time. You got to put it in the dryer machine. And when the bell goes off, then you got to put it in the basket and set it to the side for them to pick it up later. And you got like five or six that you have to do at the same time, right? Loading, unloading, trying to balance that, whatever. But it's boring as shit on purpose. On purpose, right? And you can play this little game. She has like a uh, Blackberry, you know, because it's set in the 90s or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? And she's got this one game on the Blackberry. It's like Llama. And the Llama just has to jump over obstacles. And it's just a loop. And you have to see the high score you can get, right? And you do that to pass the time. Because it's a fucking mind-numbing job. Now, eventually, she starts saving up money from the laundry. You buy an arcade machine. 
and you play it half the time you know what i'm saying but eventually customers start using it you know what i mean and you could tailor the price how much it should cost or the difficulty of the game and it, and you start fucking emptying the jumper or the hopper or whatever it's fucking called and that shit's full you know 250 dollars is like maxed out and you're like, oh shit so you start buying more arcade machines and more arcade machines and it's cool because there's dozens of games that this developer created and th some of them are like allusions to real life games i mean some are like there's like a frogger one that's basically just frogger <laughs> he basically stole that one but some of them are more just subtle allusions one is like a mix of like pac-man and gta where you're running from the cops instead of ghosts and you're picking up little stacks of money instead of little dots you know what i mean so so that one was more clever the, the frogger one was just a ripoff but literally dozens and dozens and dozens of games that he designed that like could feasibly have been real games from that period and some of them are good there's this like box stacking one you know what i mean that was really addictive and so each game has a series of challenges that you can complete and it makes the machine more popular if you complete more of the challenges so it's actually worth doing and you know just getting the achievements in in the game and so like it was fun just like sitting there playing the arcade games and then at the end of the day emptying all the hoppers and you have to like pick up trash and you still have to do the laundry in the other room you know what i'm saying gradually you keep cutting into the laundry area and, ma and making it the arcade until eventually there's nothing left you know what i'm saying and there is sort of a narrative going on like you're checking your email and your fucking beeper or whatever the fuck and you never like see your dad or see your sister but they're characters in the game and it's, it's interesting how the narrative plays out like it's just enough to give you context for what's going on and to make you care a little bit but really you're just focused on the on your business but that game is addictive i could definitely see how someone would want to work at a supermarket in a video game like it's it's, it's very cool there's a cool soundtrack like you can get the jukebox and you can play the music on there and it's pretty good soundtrack and I don't know, man. Some of those games were fun. And I was, I tried to get the high score on every single one to try to make my shit more popular. You know what I mean? I had a good old time with that game. I would recommend that game. You know, it's like a life simulator with arcade cabinets and a sort of business sim. And that was a good one. That was a cute game. So this is my Barrett action figure. It says, from Bring Arts. There's a lot of uh, kanji or whatever the fuck on here. It's just written in Japanese and whatnot. So on the back here, we've got a picture of Barrett in various poses, holding out his gun arm, giving like the victory pose here. You know, here he's got his hand like on the ground. But here he's standing in the church where you meet Aerith, but I don't think Barrett ever stepped foot in that church. So I'll show you that later. Down here it says, collect all figures in this series, which is interesting because I haven't even seen the other figures in this series. Um, and then everything else is pretty much in Japanese. So, shall we get into it? You see back here I have my Rhea Ripley. That's back here. Barrett's going to fit in nicely. And I've got my Chelsea Gray with her little championship trophy bobblehead all right let's get into this i've never done anything like this before so i don't know if this is the best angle we're just going for it i'm gonna try to not damage the box let's see what we got here trying to not damage the box All right, so you can see it's uh it's pretty big. It's actually a nice, nice size in there. Let's see what we got. We got a uh, piece of paper all in Japanese. Uh, it's got some instructions. It shows you that his hand is interchangeable. He's got like an open palm and a fist, if you could see that. These pieces just came out. Like, I don't know what this is, so I'm going to put this aside. So, is this like a platform or something? I don't know what that is. 
All right, we're going to get you out of there, bud. Pretty well packed. We've got a hand. That's pretty cool. All little tiny pieces of plastic, just like little ones shoved in between his shoulder blades and stuff like that. He's pretty awesome so far, you guys. This is fucking cool, dog. This is pretty awesome. I think I spent like 150 bucks on this one. Does he just stand on his own feet here? So he can't just... So is this a platform? I don't know what this is. I don't know what that is. Um, see if I can make sense of this. Final Fantasy VII, bring arts. Action figure, Barrett Wallace. Kanji Kanji. Some parts are interchangeable. So I could switch. So how do you pull it out there? You just pull it? Just pop it off? I don't want to rip his fucking hand off. Pretty cool. Okay, so th now I assembled this. But what does this do? Hold him up or something? It's pretty cool. I don't know if I, if I did it right. Like, it doesn't say what this piece is. Like, I just have it around the back here. I don't know if it's giving him some posture or whatever. Like, he's just leaning back against it, really. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be. Seems like a hook that would grab something. I don't know. I don't think I really need it because he stands up on his own pretty much. He could like walk and shit. Oh no, I ripped his leg off. I ripped his leg off. I hope it goes back in. Yo. Oh. This is where we ended up. Uh, his leg is off. I don't know how to put it back. It looks like just a ball and socket, you know? Like there's a ball in there and there's a socket here, but I don't know, he stands. He manages to stand with his leg off. So <laughs> I don't know if I was, I was trying to like walk with him because his, his pants look like they move and shit. So I thought I could walk with him, and I ripped his fucking leg off. I don't know how to get it back in there. I don't know if I should mess with it. Everything's in Japanese, dude. He can stand. I mean, he looks fine, I guess, even though I broke him. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave the hand that's there. So I don't think I want to touch it much more because apparently I'm a fucking idiot. So, thanks guys. That's your little bonus video. So there you go. That what that's like six games that I played recently. I am gonna try to review them closer to when I actually played them because some of these games I had a hard time remembering. Like Chrono Trigger, I was like, I remember being frustrated. I don't remember why. I remember being fucking mad at the game. I don't remember why I was mad. You know what I mean? So I'll try to be on top of that more, but. I think I have a video coming up soon. Uh, the, the Steam Summer Sale is supposed to be starting soon, so I'll probably recommend what to buy. Like, some of them I might already own, but I'll say, you know, this is a good price. This is a good time to get it or talk about what I bought. You know what I'm saying? Hi, Bear. Can you see Bear? Look at Bear. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Uh, thanks for checking my video. I recommend I would recommend Arcade Paradise and I would recommend South Park and Helldivers. The rest probably not. Probably not. All right guys, peace.